Hi, Gail. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, very welcome. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to see you. Now, you're joining us here today to talk more about social prescribing. And I know this is quite a broad uh, question that I'm going to start with, but could you give us sort of, in your own words, a little description of what is social prescribing? Sure, sure. I think social prescribing is about empowering people to make positive choices. Um, positive changes to their health and their well-being. So it's very much from our point of view, myself and Nick work as the social prescribers for the surgeries. And what we want to do is give people time, time to be heard, time to identify what matters to them. And then we can explore together what options, what resources, what community groups, what's available for people in the local community. It's very much about looking at a wider approach to health. So one in five GP appointments are about non-medical issues and it's trying to pick up on those. GPs have a lot more understanding, appreciation of the fact that practical, emotional, social issues all can impact on people's health. So it's, it's picking up those and looking at health in a much sort of broader way. And your job role is a, as a link worker, isn't it? So other than sort of chatting to people and finding out what their issues may be, what, what is your main role, would you say? I say our role is about first and foremost, it's about listening, non-judgmentally listening and really giving people time and space to explore what matters to them, what's important to them. And it's then about looking at what might help and where they might be able to access that help. So our role is also very much about having those links with the community and understanding what's available, where it is, what works for a particular person. It's a very individual, personalised approach. So for some people, it might just be one or two appointments. And within those first one or two appointments, we're able to link them in with the place that's most suitable for them, most appropriate and helpful for them. Or it may be that it's about a much longer term approach up to about six months in some cases where we're really giving people a lot more time and opportunity to to talk about their story to talk about what matters to them and then it's about building that relationship with that individual um, over some time and really giving them the space to talk and to find out what would work for them so it's a very personalised approach. It's confidential. So we get the referrals from the GPs and we record the appointments that we have and we record who we refer to and who we give information about. We record all that on the surgery system, but it doesn't go elsewhere unless that's agreed with the patient and we agree to, to do that. So our role really is about those one-to-one -one conversations with the patient, um, about keeping up to date with everything that's going on in the community and very much building those relationships relationships with facilitators and agencies and services in the community and also of course maintaining those relationships with the GPs and the health professionals at the surgery so that we can pass uh, we can refer back to GPs if necessary or on to perhaps a mental health worker um, so we can we're sort of maintaining those relationships with the community the surgery and of course with the patient themselves that we're working with. Brilliant and sometimes it's just having like that initial conversations yes. and the importance of just having someone to sit down and yes. listen to you and potentially give you some really simple advice that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Yeah, absolutely. Or weren't even aware of. Not everybody is aware of what goes on in the community. And I think that we have so much digital, digitally now, which is brilliant, but not everybody can access that. Not everybody is easily able to access that. So sometimes it's just sharing the information that we have. It's very much about empowering people to do, to to go in the direction that they want to go in, and it's just supporting with, supporting with that really. Yeah. So. Are you able to tell me any information about uh, like some of the community groups that you work with? Have you got any examples? I know you're probably not allowed to have favourites, but are there any that really like stand out to you? Oh, there's, there's so much. There's so much um, in the community now, which is brilliant. I mean, obviously, Chaos do some great stuff, and it's brilliant to be able to signpost to the community larders um, at Chaos, and also the HOPE programmes that Chaos are involved in facilitating. So the HOPE programmes that are involved 
um, sometimes a digital, sometimes a face to face, but they're fantastic because they're about supporting people make sometimes, as you said before, quite small changes to lifestyle and behavior, but getting a lot of support for that. Um, there's a community group called Connect, which is um, a great place for people who are perhaps a little bit older and a little bit more isolated. And there they can make connections with other people in the community and then go forwards and and sort of take up those and do more with that. There's Sunshine and Showers group, which is the group um, that's also locally in Truro. But there are so many groups. There's a lot. I think sometimes we forget with the online world that we've got the museum and the library in Truro, which are both brilliant yes. and often have groups running. The library continually has some group um, going on at, at, at any time. So they're a great place to start for people if people want to just drop in and ask what's around. The Maresk Community Centre now is really developing and they have a drop in too, which is right in town. Um, so there's there's quite a lot of groups. And then there's groups that are more specific. So for carers, for example. Um, but there's a lot of groups out there that perhaps if you are able to access online, you can use places, platforms like um, Cornwall Link, which are brilliant at having okay. keeping things up to date in terms of what's available and out there. So there's a lot of groups and we also we also try and give people information about the services that are available, more established services like Pentreath, for example, um, and various other mental health services around. So it's it's sometimes it's a small group, like a little art group, or it might be a larger, more established service or agency in the community. So it, it's very individual for people. That's really great to know that it can be really sort of tailored and individual to that person. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was well-being, because I know that's one of the biggest um, factors that people often um, come to social prescribing for, is for a bit of well-being support or advice. Um, so what sort of benefits in regards to well-being have you noticed from, from clients? It, absolutely. They... I think one of the biggest benefits for clients is those connections that they make um, when they're involved in groups and activities is the connections they make with other people. And, and as I've said, the digital world is a great world for in lots and lots of ways, but a lot of people really do want that face to face connection, that connection with other people. Some of the biggest issues that we come across are around isolation and loneliness, particularly after COVID. And so, very much it's about making those connections, feeling better within themselves and just those small, small changes like walking groups that we have, just getting out and enjoying walking and being outside can make people, the feedback that we get really makes them feel so much better in themselves, more confident um, and feeling better physically with their physical health as well as their emotional and mental health. Yeah, and in terms of you personally, Gail, um... What tips do you have when it comes to well-being? Is there anything you do? Like for me, for me personally, if I know that I'm having, you know, a bit of a down day or if I'm struggling with a bit of um, loneliness or anything like that, I, I, I very much believe in, in a bit of self-care. You know, if I want to treat myself to a takeaway yes. or yes. a night in, yes. in front, with a blanket yes. and a film, I feel like it's really important to have that self-care when it comes to your overall well-being. Is there anything that works for yes. you? Have you got any top tips? For me, yes. I For me, I think it depends. It depends on how I'm feeling. But I would say getting outside is one of the key things for me. Just making sure I get outside, even if it's for the shortest walk, even if it's just literally round the block, as it were, getting outside is, I think, can be quite a game changer in terms of just lifting your mood. It can really have a shift on your mood. If I'm feeling active enough, I love a Zumba class. If I'm feeling um, well and good enough to do something like that, that can really lift. So just get, just getting outside is a big one. And then other times, like the self-care that you were talking about, sometimes it's just about taking care for yourself at home with a good book and just taking time for you. Or connecting with other people, if you can get in touch with friends, family, that always lifts me. If I can get in touch yeah. with somebody that I know will be just a really good sounding board, can just have that make a difference. 
Yeah. And sort of final question, uh, Gail, sort of how can people, um, those in need of support, how can they access these groups and the service that you provide? So all our referrals do come through the GPs. So they all come through the GPs or other health professionals at the surgery. But we do have a website page for the surgery website. So there's a page there about social prescribing that I could give you the link to if that's helpful afterwards. I don't know if you're able to share that, but then yeah. people can access a list of the resources and information that we have there. So they can do that otherwise to come through um, through their GP and we'd be very happy to, to, to speak with them and give them some time. Fantastic. Gail, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to join me today. And we will, of course, um, share all the uh, contact information after this. So thank you very much. No problem at all. It's a pleasure.